Welcome to Game of Thrones, a telltale adventure over here at the Edge of Casual. I am your host, Verso, and I'm going to be doing another one of these videos that uh, maybe it seems to you like a Let's Play, but I, let's not call it that because <laughs> I'm bad at Let's Plays. Let's just go ahead and call this a uh, commentary track with some gaming video in the background because <laughs> that's what it is. So why am I talking about Game of Thrones, a Telltale series? Well, if you're watching this around the time that I'm recording it, then you probably already know, unless you're under, unless you've been hiding under a rock, I hate that expression by the way, but unless you've been hiding under a rock, you know that the HBO Game of Thrones series is coming to an end this, uh, this Sunday, and there's been a lot of drama swirling around with regard to Daenerys' villainous turn in the penultimate episode. So it just it seemed like a good time to revisit this game, which I've been thinking to replay for a while. And for the record, I am an ardent supporter of this game, Telltale in general. Uh, this game in particular didn't get necessarily great reviews at Metacritic. It sits at a 64 with critics and a 6.4 with users, which is weird. <laughs> it's weird to see the scores be so equivalent between the users and the critics, but... There you go. I think he done it himself the way he tells it. I'm probably not going to be remarking upon what's happening in the game all that much, though I will try to shut up from time to time, just because I think the writing is uh, is really stellar, and the voice acting is top notch as well. Let's not leave those voice actors out. this time. Forrester won't be happy with blood and brains. Yeah, these 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 telltale mechanics, and they always try to teach you the mechanics at the beginning of the game, and I always tend to fail <laughs> terribly at most of them. I don't know why. Um, you know, my eye-hand coordination was never great, and then as, as I'm getting older and doing, playing fewer games that require eye-hand coordination, it's like, yeah, I'm just total garbage now, please don't watch me play this game, I'm going to make a few errors, probably. So yeah, this game begins with the Red Wedding, and if you know anything at all about Game of Thrones, then that's probably the point in the story where everything sort of fell into place for you. If, if it didn't click with you when uh, Eddard Stark was decapitated, then you got it here. It made you realize, finally, what George R. R. Martin was, was doing with this series, with the Song of Ice and Fire series. Whether you've read the books or not, or just watched the HBO series, The Red Wedding was kind of a defining moment in, in the overall narrative, and it kind of set the stage for everything that came after. Okay, so... Telltale. <laughs> Let's talk about Telltale. The late lamented Telltale, which went out of business at the end of 2018. Uh, they have been kind of raked over the coals many times for sort of presenting you with the illusion of choice in their games, even some of their real critical hits like the original Walking Dead, which was maybe given a pass at the time, but in retrospect, looking at uh, Telltale's larger body of work, People kind of said that nothing that you did really mattered, and you know, that, there's some truth to that. I mean, I think that's something that plagues most adventure games. It's very difficult to write a branching narrative that truly adjusts to a user's decisions and, and follows them through to their logical conclusions, because, you know, they're just being practical, right? I mean, there are so many endings or scenarios that can be written, coded, you know, designed, so much voice acting that can be done, recorded. Uh, you know, within the confines of a practical budget, production schedule, I'm not talking about god money here. Um, so I don't necessarily think that uh, Telltale has been treated kindly with this, though I will say Illusion of Choice is definitely on display <laughs> with, the, with the Game of Thrones Telltale series, but that's not a bad thing, and I think that if, if, it's going to, if you're going to have an Illusion of Choice in any of their games, it makes the most sense in this one. I mean, if you're just looking at the setting of this scene here, which begins at the Red Wedding, as mentioned. I mean, none of these characters... I mean, just, I'm, I'm going to spoil this for you. Almost all of these characters are going to die. Because <laughs> of the Red Wedding. It's Game of Thrones. Garrod will survive. If you were getting attached to Garrod, I'll let you know he survives. He even survives until the end of the season. Spoilers. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Well, I did. I did. It's, the game has been out for long enough now. I feel like I can spoil a few things. But, um... But, so, so none of these characters really has a choice about whether they're going to live or die in the scene. I mean, it's, it's, it's Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire, you know, events, characters, they sort of have lives of their own. And I think Telltale's writing team was 
really played it true to uh, to George R. R. Martin's kind of themes within the larger narrative. Now, if you only watch the HBO series, especially if you've only watched the last couple of seasons, <laughs> um, where things sort of took a, uh, I don't know, I, I, I would say the story became way more efficient than the last couple of seasons of the HBO series. But um, that's not the way George R. R. Martin tells a tale, and it's not the way a Game of Thrones Telltale series tells it either. So, in light of all this controversy surrounding Daenerys and everything else right now, I've been reading some interesting threads on Twitter about the different sorts of writers, and for the record, though I have written things, I don't consider myself a writer at all. So if I say anything dumb here and you happen to be a writer or care about writing, uh, feel free to correct me in the comments or just you know start a discussion because I love that. But uh, I saw something pretty interesting on Twitter the other day. It was like an alignment chart, you know, sort of like a like a D and D alignment chart, you know, with chaotic, evil, and you know, lawful, good, you know, all that stuff. But this was for writing style alignments, and it was broken down into three tiers, right? So the top tier was pantsers, middle tier was plancers, and <laughs> the bottom tier was plotters. And uh, you know the top tier, the pantsers, those are people like George R. R. Martin. They kind of write by the seat of their pants. They pretty much they they define a character and they let, they let the characters tell the story. So so you know whatever the writer's original intentions were, maybe they don't matter by the end because the characters are the ones that took the story where it needed to go. Um, in fact, that's some people would say that's that's part of why the last uh, Song of Ice and Fire book kind of felt a little bit meandering, <laughs> like maybe George R.R. R. Martin lost his way a little bit, though, you know, we all still love the books, we all, of, of course, and we love the characters in the books, but we're being honest, he has gone way off into the weeds <laughs> onto plots that that uh, you, never will, you never would have dreamed to see in the HBO series because they just are barely even important. Still interesting, but, uh, but just not probably important to the larger plot. Uh, okay. So then in the middle, you've got the plantsers, which are the people who sort of plant seeds. Um, they kind of have a good sense of where they want the story to go, and they kind of plant the seeds that, that can make it get there. But if things take a turn along the way, they're willing to maybe adjust their 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 plan. And then at the bottom tier, you've got the plotters, and these are the people who kind of rigorously uh, mark out all the various story beats. And they know how things are going to begin, what's going to happen in the middle, what's going to happen in the end, and so forth. Take your time. You lot have drunk your share. Good thing, Lord. The Game of Thrones showrunners have been um, criticized for being more in the vein of plotters, nice night, right? Because they had an end point, and they knew they had to get there. So they they had their you know they knew which beats they had to visit along the way to get to that get to that ending, and um, and. Now that's exactly what they're doing, and some people haven't liked it. Season seven and eight, they haven't really gone over very well with the with the long-term fans, like the hardcore fans, who are probably the book readers. Um, and understandably, it's a different style of storytelling. It's it's like the exact opposite of the storytelling that you got in the first few seasons. But um, you know, if you ever wanted to see this series end, and I think they all did after working on it all these years, I understand. I understand, and I haven't. I haven't hated, even as a fan of the books, I have not hated the HBO series. I, I enjoy it, if I'm being honest. Something the matter, Bowen? We have to. Yeah. So we're <laughs> we're seeing Garrett here noticing that the Freys are all carrying weapons. Doesn't really look good for him. I think the first time I played this, I actually kind of left Bowen. <laughs> <laughs> to go save uh, to save Forrester, I felt bad about it. Though I'm not even sure. I I, you know, I don't recall what happens to Bowen. <laughs> Just assume again. Assume nothing good happens ever. So, with all that said, getting back to the illusion of choice in in this game. Yeah, it's yes. You have no choice about anything in this game. It feels like you have a choice, and in fact, of all the Telltale series, this one had the most decisions that just annihilated me. <laughs> like, I, I seriously, I had to step away from the computer 
like go drink a cup of coffee, like take a nap. I could not, <laughs> I could, like I was paralyzed by some of the choices that I had to make, especially later in the in the series when you meet Ramsey Bolton. Uh, the writing is amazing. I mean, it's it's he's terrifying in this game, like even even more so than in the HBO series, wherein he could occasionally come off almost a little bit comical. In this, in Telltale's Game of Thrones, it's like <laughs> he's just like evil incarnate. I, I hated him so much, and, and nothing good ever comes from an encounter with Ramsey Bolton in this game. You think you can talk to him, and so this is kind of getting to my point. Like, you think you can talk to Ramsey and maybe reason with him, and he'll let you kind of think that he's going along with you, and then it will turn out that you never had any choice in that. Like, as, as smartly as you played it, as diplomatic as you were, as strong as you thought you were being with your character, you thought you were making the right decisions every single time, making the right dialogue choices, whatever. Yeah, Ramsey will, will sh put you in your place every single time. And there are a lot of points in this game that feel like that. Like, like oh, I, I thought that I was doing the right thing. Like, I was absolutely sure that this was, this was the road that was going to lead me to success. But uh, the game clobbers you over the head with the hopelessness of it all. I think, in a way, even more than the illusion of choice, that may be why people didn't like this game so much. Because you can't win, basically. Like you thought, you thought Walking the Walking Dead series was dire. <laughs> this game, nothing good happens to anybody. Like even at the end, like you, you think, e even at the end, after everything bad that has happened, you still think you have a choice, and then it turns out you don't. <laughs> it's it's horrible. So. So yeah, so this is Roderick here. He's the son of Lord Forrester, and yeah, I mean he looks like the classic hero, right? You think maybe this guy's gonna survive? Nope, <laughs> he's gone. Uh, you cannot save him. Lord Forrester, you think he could be like a mentor figure to Garrod? Nope, don't expect him to last very long. I mean, look, things play out as they must. I mean. You see this. You see the scene setting here. Nobody's getting out of this alive, or if they do, it's going to be like a single, a single person who just managed to slip through the cracks, which is Garrett. And he's got Garrett actually has a really interesting arc throughout the, throughout this game. He's one of the characters who kind of he's there at the beginning and he's there at the end. And I'm just going to spoil this for you right now. The six episode series it ends on a cliffhanger, which Telltale never followed up <laughs> with the second season. And it's horrible because it was getting really interesting too, but uh, but it'll never happen, uh, especially now with Telltale being out of out of business. Well, it was never going to happen in the first place. Let's just be honest. Um, the game didn't do that well, and uh, I don't. I'm not. I don't know all the details. And maybe there were other details behind uh, behind their arrangement with HBO as well, but but sadly we will never get to know the conclusion of that arc. Seven hells. So yeah, I guess my point in coming back to this Game of Thrones Telltale series at this point is to just weigh in a little bit on the topic of whether characters should conform to the demands of the plot or whether the characters themselves should drive the plot. And I think Telltale definitely took the GRRM tack with this game of just letting the characters tell the story. I mean, I don't want to leave you with the impression that nothing at all that you do in this game matters, because, I mean, it clearly does. There are branching story paths, and they change various things along the way. But ultimately, things are going to be what they're going to be in this game, right? So, for example, there's an entire plot line that plays out in King's Landing, and as we all know, the Game of Thrones is being played for real there every day. So, in the Game of Thrones, you either win or you die. And, you know, you're not one of the winners. I'm just going to break it to you. You're not going to be one of the winners in the Game of Thrones. So expect your characters to die. Regardless of the fact that you think that you employed the utmost diplomacy and tact in your dealings with the people there, there are forces that are acting against you. And you know they're just you're 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 a pawn in their game ultimately. And you know thematically it's very true to what to what GRRM has 
um, has done himself. So, I guess what I'm saying, maybe give Telltale a little bit of a break on this. <laughs> they did what they had to do, and uh, you know, it's a, it's a great little addition to Game of Thrones. Highly recommend that you play it. Uh, I'm sure you can get it real cheap these days, especially with the with the company being out of business. So with the credits rolling, this feels like an excellent place to stop. <laughs> I've been rambling for a while here, I'm sure I've said the same thing over multiple times. But if you have any thoughts or comments about this topic, or about Game of Thrones, or Telltale, please do feel free to share them in the comments section. But in the meantime, thanks for hanging out, and keep it casual.